Hi guys. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over five questions, and they all with they all fall inside of the class of strings or hash map, depends on how how you see them basically. So the first three are quite simple, and then the remaining two it's a little more difficult. So I'm going to spend a little more time in trying to explain my my steps first, and then I'll go straight into the coding and how to code them and what you should be doing. So I'm not really just going to jump into like the code first. So the way this is going to work is we're going to go over the question, then we're going to explain the thought process, and then we're going to show you how to code them. So please take your time. First, once I go over the question, pause the video, try the algorithm yourself, and then you can look at my solution. Again, my solution is not the only solution out there. There might be other solutions. This is just a way of doing them. All right, so the first type, so the first question is anagrams. So let's see if I can, um, let's go to it. So write an algorithm to determine if two strings are, are anagrams. So two strings are considered so if you can rewrite both to be the same thing. So for example, evil, E-V-I-L, and vile, V-I-L, are considered anagrams because you can rewrite vile uh, and, and get evil out of it. A gentleman, a elegant man. 11 plus 2, 12 plus 1. These all meet the requirements, basically. What, an, an example of something that probably doesn't meet the requirements is, let's say I have something like this. If I have pill, and then I have, let's say, this, pill and pala. That's not even a word. But it, this, these two are not nanograms of each other because there's, no matter how much I try to rewrite P-A-L-A, -A, I will never get P-A-L-E back. So there are several ways of solving it. The easiest way that I think, let me show you my, my algorithm for it. So, well, this is my thought process. So we're going to use the first example of val for this. So for val, the best thing is you break everything down into this dictionary or hash map kind of uh, view and then you can see that there is one V, one I, one L, one E. For evil there's also one E, one V, one I, one L. And then what you do now is that you just want to iterate over the map and see if they're this if the V here is one and the V here is one. The I here is one and the I here is one. The L is one, the L is one, the E is one and the E is one. If all of these conditions are true, then you return true. But the moment you fail for one of them, you, you return false completely. That means it is not true. So for pill, P-A-L-E, P is 1, A is 1, that's good. L is 1, but L is 2. So that is not true. So you return false and return false. So having said that, let us try to solve this question. Okay, so let's call. So I am going to use ES6 syntax. Uh, arrow functions of the sort, so bear with me. Anagrams. So we take two strings, S1, S2. Make it a little bigger for you guys. Okay, there we go. And then the first thing that we want to do is we want to create, all right, so let's go back to this. We want to create this dictionary or this hash map kind of thing here. That's what I want to get. And we want to use it to, to actually go through and loop through them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a utility function, a helper function. Honestly, people love this. When you can write functions to help you do your job, they love to see that you know what you're doing. So S1. All right, so first thing first is I'm going to create an object, empty object. And then I'm going to loop through this object. Well, loop through the string. So we're going to do a, a for of loop. Let i of s1. And then I can say, you know what? I can do if, or you know what? I can just do it in one line. If um, object of i exists, if it, if it does not exist, I mean, if it does not exist, what I can do is, if it does not exist, I can set this equal to one. If it does exist, I'll just it, I'll just update it, and then what I'll return is object. I'll return the object. 
Okay, so let's see if this actually works. Let's, you know what, let's use it. Let's uh, do a console log of character map. Let's pass in a string. Let's see what string. Let's pass in val. And what we should get is a, it's, it's like an object based type of dictionary. So let's try this out. So, so node using JavaScript node code. There we go. V is one, make it bigger. V is one, I is one, L is one and E is one. That's exactly what we want. And if we want, we can try make two L's. You should see what you should get is two L's. L is two. Beautiful. So that's what we want. So we've just created an object. We've created a utility function to help us generate this object. So the next thing I want to do now is just let's use this. Let's use this uh, utility function to help us solve this problem. So first thing is const s1. Let's call it object one. So generate that so this is going to give us the object of whatever the string is so val we're going to end up calling anagram instead and what's the other word val and evo okay evo okay awesome and then that's, that's what we're going to end up doing okay so this is going to get the object of this the character map of that this is going to get the character map of the second one. Awesome. So now we have the character map of both. Okay. So the next thing we, I want to do is I want to iterate over this object. So whenever you want to iterate over an array or a string, you use a for off loop. Whenever you want to iterate over an object, you use a for in loop. Let me show you. Let I in object notice how this is a for in loop not a for off loop for off loops are used for arrays and strings uh, for in loops are used to iterate over objects so for in loop and then what I want to do is I'm going to ask this question I'm going to say does object for object one of I if it does not exist if it does not equal object two of I return false that means it's not true return false and then if it goes through everything and still doesn't return false then return true and that should be it so what's going on here so I'm saying for every object for the so you know what it's it's best if I show you so if I have an object like this we have V one I is one L is one and E is one so this is gonna create the the object one this is how it's gonna look and then object two object two is gonna look similar let me show you object two is gonna look like E is one V is one I is one and L is one. So what's gonna what this is doing here is saying from object one, let I of object one. So the first index in the object one, so V, it's gonna look for the V in object two, this V. And it's gonna say is this number the same as this number? If it's not the same, return false. Then do the same thing for I. Then do the same thing for L. Then do the same thing for E. That's what's gonna happen. Now before we test this. I want to show you how we can optimize this code. Uh, one easy way of doing it is checking if the two lengths are equal. So if the two lengths are not equal, return false right away. There's no way for both of them to be anagrams of each other. So let's say we can do it over here and say if um, S1 length does not equal S2 length, return false awesome and that should be it that's it we solved the problem so let us test this out we're gonna test it out with uh, several things 
vowel. We're gonna test it out with um, the other word. What is it? Gentleman and, and elegant man. So a gentleman, elegant man. We're gonna test it out with the, the third one. What is it? What is the third one? 11 plus two, 12 plus one. 11 plus 2, 12 plus 1. Okay, awesome. So all of this should return true, but let's put a control there, one that's going to return false. So this should return false. Let's say pill and pala. That should return false. So true, 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 false. Let's see. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, oh. <laughs> awesome. True, 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 false. And that's it. There's not. There's really nothing else in the question. This is a really simple uh, algorithm, and I think you should be able to do this really quick. So let's go to the next question. What's the next question? We, it's a. We are doing more of a design-based type of question, where it's basically we are saying that design. Based, uh, oh, let me go to the thing. So here is it. So this one also it's it's fairly simple. So design a hash map without using any built-in hash table libraries. Your design should should include three main functions. So that's the problem is design a hash map without using any built-in hash table libraries. Your your so basically you can't use set set function and set this and set that. You have to build everything from scratch. Alright so and your and your design must have three functions the put function, the get function and the remove function. So inside the put function you should be able to insert a key value pair into the hash map. If the value already exists in the hash map, update the value. Okay, so something like this, where we update it. So if it already exists, just update it. Okay. And then the get. When you get um, a key, you, you should return the value of the key. Okay, to which the specified key is mapped. Return negative one if there is no mapping to the key. And then the final one, remove. Removing the mapping for the value key if this map contains the mapping for the key. So basically just remove it. All right, that makes sense. So let's see how it looks. So when you're designing this, first start off with the map, empty map. So put, if I put 01, what should happen? I should have, this should be the result. This is how the map should look now. Now, if I put something else in there, H and 1, this is how it should look. And then if I remove H, then it should be 0, 01 left. Or if I was to get something with O, I should get 1. So basically, that's how it works. I mean, again, I think this is fairly simple. Take, uh, pause the video, just go through this. Uh, you can use any, um, any uh, type of settings you want to use, but please do not use any built-in libraries to actually solve this question. There is a similarity from this first question to the design-based question, which is why I chose that. So let's pause the video here and and try it yourself. So assuming you have paused the video, I'm going to show you my solution. Let's, let's erase this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create, oh, let me, let me make it back bigger. I'm going to use ES6 syntax here, use classes, class, let's call it my, my hash map. Okay, so with, with any class, you should always have a constructor, constructor, and inside my constructor, I'm going to have the empty object, the empty object, I mean this right here. So I'm going to say this dot object. That's my empty object. So that's the first thing. I've done the first thing. I've met this requirement over here. So what I want to do first is I just want to create the first method, the put function, where you give me a key and a value, and I put that value inside this map. So let's make this put. So this is my design. You're going to give me a key. You're going to give me a value. And then, okay, what am I doing here? I'm using ES6 and narrow function. There we go. There we go. I was like, what am I doing? Okay, so this dot object key equals value. That's it. 
that part is simple so whenever you call put it's, it's going to take in the value the key that you um, pass in and it's going to put the value that you put in that's it that's really simple the next one i want to do is i, I want to create the remove function now the, re the remove function is i think should be a simple as well you give me the key and so i'm going to look for it wherever that exists i'm going to set it to undefined so it's not defined anymore it's not defined anymore that's it and then the final one is is more of like the the put function so this one i want you to think about it a little bit so it says pair it says it says insert key to value pair into a hash map if the value already exists in the hash map update the value so we need to make sure that it, we need to check to see if it exists if it does exist we update it if it doesn't exist we put it in so let's try that key value all right so how are we going to do this so the first thing is i want us to to see let's see if, if it doesn't exist we say we can say if this dot object key so if this so take a look at the remove function here over here is when we're removing it to remove it we 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 look for it and we just set it equal to undefined i'm doing the same thing here i'm saying if this exists if this does not equal undefined i mean i can say that if this is not equal undefined as long as it doesn't equal undefined oh not put this is get uh, sorry i've been using the wrong word get get returns the value to which the specified key is mapped return negative one if there's so i was doing get in my mind but looking at put it doesn't make sense so re returns the value to which the specified key is mapped return negative one if there is no mapping that's what we're doing sorry for the confusion so if this that object of the key does, is not undefined as long as it's not undefined then what am i doing is i am returning this dot object of the key that's all i'm doing now if it else let's see what this is what we should do returns the value to which the specified key is mapped return negative one if there's no mapping okay so else return negative one that's it i think we're done let's uh, let's see does the get the get takes the key only oh i'm like i didn't use the value okay awesome all right so let's make sure i have everything right so what does put do inserts the key into the hash map if the value already exists in the, in the hash map update the value okay Okay, so if, if it already exists, update it, mean override it. Okay, so that doesn't, that's fine. So this, so if it already exists, it doesn't matter. We're just going to override it with value. That's what it's saying over there. So if, let's say, let's say O was 1, and then we put in O for 2, we're just going to override it to 2. That's all we're doing. So then the remove is, remove the mapping for the value key if this map contains the mapping for the key. So remove it. Think with yep, we're making it undefined and then we're getting it based on the key. If it's not undefined, return it, else return negative one. All right, so how do we test this? Let's see, how are we gonna test this? So, first thing is this we can create a, uh, an object for it. So, we can say let object equals new my hash map. So, the constructor doesn't take any value, so that's good. So, then we can try, we can say, um, but there's not really a print function here. Huh? Let's see. We can say object dot put key slash value, right? So what key and value do we need? Let's put in, let's put O slash one. You know what? Let's create a utility function print so we can actually see what we're doing. This is not part of the requirement, but I, I think it's going to help us just to see the results. We can say console.log this.object. Shows us the object. So we can always call that. So after we put in the first one, let's print it. 
So we say object dot prints. So we see how it looks. So let's try this. Hopefully everything goes well. Let's clear the command. There we go. Zero one. That's exactly what we want to see. Zero one. All right. So let's let's put in something else. Let's put. Let's put. Let's update it. Make sure that it works. Oh, zero. It should be three now because that's what the question says. It says, it says if the value already exists in the hash map, update the value. So let's update it. Let's see. There we go. Zero three. Beautiful. So zero one is showing because it's it's over here. We call him print twice. Okay. Awesome. If we don't call print twice, then it's just gonna be zero three. All right. So let's do another one. Let's put H. Let's see how it looks now. There we go. So the re the most recent one is this. 03 H1. That's good. And now the next thing that we, we want to do is we want to let's um let's get let let us we'll get returns it. So you know what? We can't we don't really need the print. I forgot we can just use get. So instead of print, I could have just used get. Again, this is my mistake. We can just we can just object dot get get zero. And then here as well, we can instead of we don't really need the print function, but that was the whole point. So we can use get over here. Get zero as well. And then we use get over here as well. And then get h. Enter the key. It should give. It should give us the. Well, we need to print it. It's not going to give us the value. There we go. Because we need to print out the value when we get it. So I'm going to put this inside the console dot log statement. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to put this inside the console.log statement. There we go. So now it should get us actually printed the result out. 131. One. Beautiful. So 131. One. All right. So that's good. So the next thing we want to try is we want to try to remove. So let's remove. Uh, so let's let's remove something. Let's do object.remove. What do we want to remove? Let's remove um, the H or the O. Let's remove the O. So we're passing the key. Now, when we print it, let's not call get in the, the, the first two times. Let's just call it once. Let's call it uh, over here. I'm going to call it over here. And let's see. Let's see what, what happens when we try to get the one whose key that we, we already removed. What's gonna happen? So here we're removing the key of zero, of O, and here we're trying to get it, although we, although it's removed already. So let's see. How does it keep doing that? Negative one. Perfect. That's exactly what the question says. Returns the value to which the specified key is mapped. Return negative one if there is no mapping. Awesome. So take a look at the code, guys. I think this was fairly simple. Again, I pr um, the, we didn't really need the, the print function because get was like the print function. We just needed to put it inside a console.log. But here's the problem. Let's move on to the next question. So the third question is a hash map as well. It's more hash map as well. But I think it's also fairly simple. So this one, this one is uh, states given two strings, j and s return the total amount of times j exists in s okay so given two strings j and s return the total amount of times j exists in s hmm okay so let's take a look at uh the first example given here how many times does b exist in here three times so this should give me three 
How many times does B exist here? Three. How many times does D exist here? One. So three plus one, four. This should give me four. It says the total. How many times does Z exist here? Zero. Let's be, take a look at this. This is small. This, this is a small letter Z. This is, this is capital letter Z. So we need to um, somehow put that in the code to ensure that if this should return zero because this does not exist in this string. All right, so to pause the video, guys. Try it first, and then, and then we can um, go over it together. All right, so hopefully you've you've done your own portion. I'm gonna go straight to mine. Okay, so here let's go back to the problem. So let's see, B exists in B. So here I think we are going to use a hash map as well, because because we need to know how many times. Like it's good to to know if. So e, if we do a hash map of this, you get E1, B1, D1. Here you just get B3. And then you can iterate over the hash map of both of them to see if they equal each other. You know what? So let's try that. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's say const, what should we call this? Given two strings, what name should I call it? Uh, where did I get this question? I got it online somewhere. Joe's and stones. Oh, okay. Let's call it Joe's and stones. Right. So it, what happens is it's you're giving um two strings. So let's say string one, string two. All right. So what we are doing is, what I want is I want to create a hash map of both of them. Of E, B, D, and and the Bs. That's the first thing I want to do. So we can reuse that the hash the utility function that we wrote for the first problem. So let's quickly write that. Hopefully you guys still have it, so you can just copy and paste it. I'm gonna rewrite it really quick. Here I'm using a hash. Here I'm creating a, a quick hash table. If object of I does not exist, set object of I, set it equal to one. If it does exist, just iterate over it. And then return the object. Okay, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna generate, um, Object one, object two, okay. So let's you know what, let's print it out because let's just see how it looks. This is anytime I'm coding, I like seeing how things look. S1. I mean, what am I printing? I'm printing, let me print the objects. Object one, object two. All right, so let's just print this out. Let's print out what we get from here. So what two strings can we use as an example? Let's say, oh, we can use EBD and BBB. So we can say EBD BBB. All right, so I'm going to go to the compiler now and print this out. Let's clear this. Try it now. Okay, the first one is 1, 1, 1. Second one is B3. Okay, this is what I was looking for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to iterate over this. I'm going to say, does this exist here? If it does not exist here, fine, nothing. If it does exist here, sum it up. So does this exist here? Yes. So if it does exist, sum equals sum plus this number here. So the number here is three, because so B exists here three times. So the sum is now three. Does this exist here? No, it does not. So do nothing. So let's go over it again. Does this exist here? No, it does not. Does, so do nothing. 
does this exist here? Yes, it does. How many times? Three times. So sum equals sum plus three. Sum is going to be initialized with zero. So zero plus three will give you three. And now the sum is three. Does D exist here? No. So now the, the sum is just three and I'm going to return three. And that's the answer because B exists here three times. This exists here three times. This should give you four because B is three and D is one. And this should give you zero. So let's, let's try that. So let's define sum. Initialize sum as zero. And then we can say for, again, we're using a for in loop because this is an object. We're going to iterate over an object. Let i in object one. It's object one that we're iterating over, not object two, because we want to check if object one exists in object two. If Let's see, object two of i, if it exists, then sum plus equals object two's value. Awesome. That's exactly what, what, what we want. And then we just return the sum. And that should be it. So this should give you three. Definitely. Return. We need to put it inside the console log to print it out. Console.log. So uh, example one, let's call it, should give you three. We're going to do three examples. The second one is EBD and BBBD. Add a D here. And the third one is 1Z and 2 capital Z. So this should give you zero because there's no small letter KZ here. So let's try that. Let's run all three. Let me clear this. Run it. Node. Let's just go back to upper history. Oh, let me remove the console log. It's messy. Remove this. There we go. So now we should be able to see it cleanly. There we go. Three, four, zero. Beautiful. So the first one exists three times, then four, then zero. So it's saying B exists here three times. B exists here three times, but D also exists here one time. So that's four. No small letter Z exists here. Awesome. So again, I thought that was fairly simple as well, but it's 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 a good practice. Um, what's the next problem? So we went. So we just did three problems. So the fourth one is uh, it's it's also a design problem. So I think this one could be a little. This one has medium in there, so it's this one is a little bit fairly difficult. Let's see what the question is. Okay, so this one is interesting. So it says, design a logger system that receives streams of message one at a time or simultaneously, along with its timestamp. Each message should be printed if and only if it is not printed in the last 10 seconds. Okay, sounds a little complicated. We should be able to do this. All right, so let's see what that means. So the first function, function F, let's assume the function that we write is called f. So we're going to assume it's called f. So if the timestamp, so in one timestamp, let's assume this is in seconds. It tells you seconds. So one second, in the first second, it says one at a time or simultaneously. All right, so in one second, let's say we print hello. Then would this be printable? Yes, true. Because this is the first input. In the second input, let's say two seconds has passed now. And we, and we print bar. Time step is two seconds. Would this be printable? True. That's correct. Three seconds has passed. We print the word hello. Would this be printable? False. No. Why? Because the last time we, we print the word hello, it was only, it says what? Last 10 seconds. The last time we print the word hello, it was only two seconds ago. Take a look. Hello is here. The last time we print hello, that was, the last time hello was true, was when timestamp was one. The difference between three and one is two. So two seconds ago, we printed this. So it doesn't meet the requirement of 10 seconds. So the answer is false. 
So we're going to print bar again. Bar at 8 seconds is going to be false because the last time we printed bar that was true, it was 6 seconds ago, 8 minus 2. So it doesn't meet the requirement of 10 seconds. Print hello again. Hello is 10 in 10 seconds. So the last time we printed hello was 10 minus 1, 9 seconds ago. It's going to be false because it's not true. And then the next time, the next hello is at 11 seconds. This should be true because here it's 11 seconds. The last time hello was true was 11 minus 1. That is 10 seconds ago. Hence, it should be true. And then take a look at this. So everything, I've, every example here has happened one at a time. The next two examples happen simultaneously. Yeah, look, the, the, the timestamps are both 100 seconds. So if you print this simultaneously, one should be true, one should be false. Because when one happens, the other one is not 10 seconds after. So again, this take uh, pause the video, try this out yourself. This can be a little challenging. So you're designing something here. You're not you're not writing a function. You're design. So you're you're basically writing a class and you're calling the class to do it. This is a log assistant. All right. So I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. So hopefully you guys have been through it. So let me let me erase this. So let's see. What's the first thing we can do? Let's um. So we need to find a way to know when both both of these things have been called. So you know what, let's create the class logger. And then let's create a constructor. This dot object equals that. So that's that. Now the next thing we want to do is let's let's do a print like like a print map that's going to print out the object for us. console.log this dot object so it's going to always print it out for us all right this is good all right so the next thing is let's take a look at this so we have we did the constructor we we we're doing the print map so let's see hello is true so what i want to do here is I'm, i i want to create the character map Remember, every problem that we have did so far, the first problem, we use the character map. Uh, here, we use the character map. Here, we use the character map. Here, we're also going to use the character map. So, I intentionally chose problems where I feel like character maps would be really good to use. So, let's see. Design a logger system that receives streams of messages one at a time or simultaneously. How long will this time stand? Each message should be printed if, no, if it's not. Okay. So I'm thinking this through. So let's create the character map. Hmm. Call it charm map. So what does the character map is going to take timestamp? That's timestamp, and it's going to take the string. Reason is why? Why are we doing? That? Because we're going to use the string as a key, and we're going to use the timestamp as the value. If we if we do that. Then we can okay. So here's my thought: If we use the, we'll use the key, we'll use the value here, as the word, the message itself, as a key, and we'll use the timestamp as a value, and then we can check to see if the numbers, if the difference is greater than ten, when we iterate over them. So let's see. So we can say um, if this that object of the string or the message, whatever. The message, let's use the word message, of the message, if it does not exist, if it does not exist, then this dot object of the message equals the timestamp. That's if it does not exist. Okay, awesome, so that's that. So we're done with that. Now here comes the, the the most important part: how to use all this helper functions that we are, that we are doing. Let's see. Character map. Okay, let's let's think about this. So let's 
so let's assume we're using the word hello so we have to create the map of hello so let's you know what let's say let's call it should print message so again this is a design function you will get ask design functions I did and I passed all of them so message okay so the first thing is we want to um, uh, for the new words hello and one we want to initiate them so what we can say is we can we can um, we can say if this dot object again message if that does not equal undefined because it could be undefined can it yeah it can if that does not equal undefined as long as it's not undefined we can create the character map of it so pass in the timestamp and pass in the message then return true so what we're saying here is that we're saying that if as long as this exists that's, that's basically what this is saying if it's not undefined as long as you know it exists we're creating the character map over here we're creating it and we return true so that's fine as long as it exists this sh this should take care of the first case this should take care of like this one that's what I just did so anytime the word is new so hello in, for hello it's not gonna eat it for H E L -R. for the first one it's gonna give you undefined create it the second this one is also gonna give you undefined create it return true but this one's gonna give you false because we've seen it already all right so you know what we use this one for new words now let's do repeated words For repeated words new message let's use the, let's use the correct term new message repeated message so if so for this one this is the first time return true return true so this is not the first time so it's gonna return false all of this all right this is good so now let's do the let's do one for repeated terms so if it's repeated so if let's say if um, two, 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 timestamp, this is how we know if it's re repeated. If timestamp minus this value over here, so we're gonna get the value of it. If if, if it's greater or equal to ten, that's a good thing. That's what we want. Then we enter this if statement. Then this dot object. Should equal timestamp because now we're updating it for repeated terms so what I'm saying is this is that if it's actually true if it's actually true like over here the new timestamp should be 11 not 1 that's that's what I'm doing here the new timestamp should be 11 not 1 and then if this is that we just return true that's what we're doing now if all of this for some reason fails and I don't and it doesn't return false all right, this is good. Now we just gotta test this out to see this. We're gonna try all these examples and see if this is gonna work or not. All right, so let's see what we can do. We need to, um, the first one is what? The first one is hello and bar. And then, then we have hello again, then we have hello again. So let's see, we can do, let's create an object, new logger. Okay, so we're gonna print it out. Console dot log object dot should print message is, is what we're going for. So let's put one. Foo. What should this give us? This should give us. This should give us true. Hello one should give us true. Let's test it out. Let's clear this. True, awesome. The next one should give us true as well. Bar, two bar in two seconds. So 
So this should give this should give give us true as well. So we should get true true. So let's test this out. True true. All right, that's good. Then this one should give us false. Three seconds. Hello. Yeah. Let's see. Four, five. Um, this should give us false, shouldn't it? Let's see. I'm crossing my fingers this work, guys. I have not really tried this. Yes, it works. False. Good. Okay. So what it's saying is that I was I was like, is this gonna work? All right. So <laughs> what it's saying is that if so if none of this oh, all right so look so full okay i was it's fine useful so i'm saying here full is so on the first case it's going to be true it's undefined second case it's not printed already true third case it is printed so it's not going to enter this condition repeated this is also not true so what happens false yes i'm excited all right, the rest should work. So let's try bar eight seconds. So I, I, I did not, so I wrote this on the fly. <laughs> eight uh, bar eight seconds. So let's see. False, okay, that's good. Hello, 10 seconds. I keep saying hello, but I'm showing you full. That's because when I did the, 10 seconds. Ten seconds. This should give you what for ten seconds? False. False. Okay, that's good. Eleven seconds should give you true. Eleven seconds should give you true. Let's see. True, yes. Now we're gonna do simultaneously. Hundred seconds twice. True, false. So let's do the simultaneous one. At a hundred seconds, both. So this this the last two should be true, false. Let's see. So you should get true false. There we go. True false. Compare it to false true, false true, true false. So that was good. That was a good problem. All right. So that's good. So again, this was a little difficult. It was. It's here. It was more thinking. I almost thought I, I got it wrong as well. Even though I did this problem, I think like three weeks ago. Uh, and when I was putting the video together, I was like, hopefully I don't mess up. But here we go. That's good. All right, so the last problem that we have is adding two strings. All right, so adding two strings. This one is a little tricky. All right, so giving two non-negative integers, n1 and n2, represented as a string, return the sum of n1 and n2. It says you are not allowed to use any built-in bit integer library or convert the inputs directly to integers all right so when i was thinking of this problem the first thing i said to myself is just add just convert it to to, to int pass int and just add it together but that's not going to work for like if if they give you a billion 10 to the 9 or something like that you know that's not going to work because uh the in uh you know the end name strings just can't take it it's going to run out of memory so what we should do is we have to think of how, how to do it. So I wrote algorithm steps here. And I'm gonna I also show you how to demo it. So let's look at some examples here. We have so if you have two strings, three and six, it should give you nine. Twelve and one twenty two, both strings should give you one thirty four. One and ninety nine should give you hundred. One so the first two are fairly simple. So my algorithm was designed for this last one specifically. Why? Because I'm, it's it's you can see it. How does one and nine nine give you one hundred? 
you know because the machine always does that for you. But how do you really do it when you are writing a code? There's something called the carryover term. So that's what we're going to spend some time doing. So this is why this problem, I think, to my, in my opinion, in a way, is a little more difficult than all of them. And, and then the last one. Okay, so 1 plus 99, you should give me 100. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So here's, that, here's my algorithm. So I said, let's get the length. Let's get the length of each number first, and then we're going to loop through either of the two lengths. Then after we loop through them, we're going to get the last digit of, of each string. So basically, you, on, your first on your first loop, you get 2 and 2. Your second, your second loop, you get 2 and 1. On your third loop, you get 1 and 0 because there's no other number. So 9 and 1. 9 and 0 because there's no other number that's what that means and then the fourth one you get the sum of both digits plus a carryover term then you update the carryover and then you get the result from the sum and then you check to see if there's any carryover left all right all of that is words let's see how this looks here's my here's a little diagram that i put together so so let's say the first two numbers are 1 and 99 right 1 and 99 so we'll get the length of both of them. The length of one is one. It's remember this is a string. So this is a string. This is not a regular number. This is a string. This is a string. There we go. So the length is one, and here the length is two. And then we're gonna set carryover as zero. So we're gonna say one. So once we get, so we're gonna get the last number in this string. The last number is 1. So we're going to get that 1 plus the last number in this string is 9. So 9 plus the carryover, which is 0, that will give you 10, right? Awesome. So now that we have the 10, what I want to do is this. I want to take the 1, carry over the 1. So I'm going to update carry over inside the loop to 1. And then I'm going to set the 0 of my 10 as the result. The green box is the result box. And then I'm going to carry over the one. Then that's so that's my first iteration. My second iteration over here. Since there's since there's no more uh, strings left, since there's no more character in, inside the string, I'm going to use zero as opposed to one. That's what I was saying here. Get the last digit of the string else. Get zero. So I'm going to get use zero. Then I'm going to get the second here. This one still has one more nine. So zero plus nine. But now there is a carryover that we updated. Carryover is not zero anymore, it's one. So zero plus nine plus one, it's gonna give you 10 again. So I'm gonna carry over this one over here. I'm gonna carry it over. And I'm gonna add zero to my results. Now I have two zeros. But I'm I'm done with the loop because there's no more numbers in one in N1, there's no more numbers in N2. So I'm out of the loop. So then I'm gonna check. Outside of the loop, I'm, I'm going to check, is there any carryover terms? If the answer is yes, add whatever the carryover, don't add, attach it to the results. So there is a carryover one. Just put the one right in front. And that's what we're going to do. And it should give us the result. So this algorithm would, would actually work for any of any amount of numbers that you have. So it's easier this way. And also we... We follow all the requirements. We're not using any built-in libraries or anything like that. So I'm going to do this. So be with me. So this one doesn't use any hash map or character, any of those things. This is just direct string manipulation. All right, so create a function called add strings. So we're going to take two numbers, and one and two. They're both strings. So I'm going to define sum right away. Carry over. And then the result as an empty string. So if we go back to the algorithm, carry over is zero. The sum starts off as empty. That's the result, and it's also the sum. The sum is this, 10. This 10 here is the sum. 
That's 10 years this time. All right. So then we want to get the length of each one. That's my that's what my algorithm says. It says get the length of each number. That's the first thing. Get the length of each number. So I'm going to say let L1 equals N1 dot length minus 1. Let L2 equals N2 dot length minus 1. So I have that. Then what's my next step? Loop through either of the two lengths. While L1, how are we going to do it? We can say while L1 or L2. But L1, L2, what about if, you know, just to be safe. I don't like that. Let's make it as greater than zero. Okay. Doesn't hurt. Now, it says, get the last digit of the string, the last digit of n1 n2 okay so we can say const n1 d1 the digit digit one so this is going to be n1 of l1 if it doesn't exist remember if it doesn't exist we said it's zero that's what that's that's what this says get the last digit of the string else get zero we said it's a zero and then do the same thing for the second term d2 now we need to we need to um, uh, decrease L1 and L2 unless it's going to be an infinite loop. This will do just fine. Don't want it to be an infinite loop. So now we need to update the sum. We need to get the sum, get the sum of both digits plus a carryover term. So sum equals pass int. And to get so we're going to of d1 plus pass int of d2 plus carry over. So you're probably wondering why using why couldn't have used pass in for n1 and pass in for n2? Well, the problem said don't do it directly. So I'm not doing it directly. I'm doing it indirectly. Also, if n1 is a billion. You pass in, it's not it's not gonna pass it for you uh, of a string, and you you can't sum, like it's just not gonna go through. So um, uh, this approach works. I've tried the other, I've tried multiple different approaches solving this problem, and I finally got it <laughs> using this. Uh, pass in d1 plus pass in d2 plus carry over. Okay, so now we need to update the carry over, update the carry over term, which is here. So we need the one here. We need the zero to be the result. So let me show you something that I'm going to use. It's called math.trunk. So math.trunk, it's going to use, what it does is it gives you the number part of, of a number by removing any like fractional aspect. So if you have 13.37 gives you 13. So if you have 42.84 gives you 42. 0.123 gives you zero. So I'm using that. Because if I have 10, I want the 1 part. Then the 0 part, I'll make the result. Or if I have 1, you know, basically that. That's that's the goal. And if I have 1, it'll give me 1. So I'm going to use that to update car the carryover term. So I'm taking the sum and dividing it by 10 all the time just because I know a trunk would give me the integer part of it. So if, if, if the sum was 130, so 130 divided by 10, it's uh, 13. So then I'll get 13 as a carryover, which makes sense. Here I'm doing, here I want the 1 as a carryover. So 10 divided by 10 is what? 1. So if, this, if the first sum is 10, right? If sum is 10, 10 divided by 10 will give you 1. So math and trunk will give me 1 as a carryover. That's what I want. That's exactly what I want. It will give me 1 as a carryover. Beautiful. Now I need to, up, uh, it says update the carryover. I did that. Get the result from the sum. 
So now I need to get the, re the result. Result equals sum mod 10 plus result. So just, so I'm using mod here because I want the zero. I don't want the, the 10. I don't want the one. I, I just want the zero. I, I use math the trunk for this part because I want the one. But then for the sum, I just want the zero part. So I'm using sum mod 10. So basically the sum, what's the remainder when um, you divide 10 into sum? So let's say sum is 10, right? Is there any remainder when 10 goes into 10? The remainder is what? The remainder is zero. So zero plus res result, which is an empty string, will be zero. Beautiful, zero as a string, which is what I want to give me that. And then on the next loop, it will give me that. But now when I'm outside of the loop, if I have any carryover term, I just need to add it right in front. So when I'm outside of the loop, I'm going to say if there is any carryover, just update the result to the carryover plus the result. And then return the result, but as a string. Return the result as a string. And that should be it. Now let's try some. Let's do an easy one. Let's do console.log. We're going to add two strings. We're going to try three and six. Obviously, this should give you nine. Let's see. Let's clear this. Nine. Nice. Let's do the next one. Let's try. No, let's do it. Let's try 12 and 122. 12 and 122 should give you 134. That didn't work. Oh, I didn't save it. That's why. Save, Command S, 134. There we go. Awesome. Now let's try 0 and 6. 0 and 6 should give you 6. 6. Now let's try 1 and 99. should give you 100. Hundred, awesome. And then last example, let's try um, nine and ninety-nine. What should this give you? I think hundred and eight. Hundred and eight. Beautiful. It works. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, hanging in there. I know this was long. We went through five different algorithms. For those of you who made it through the end, I want to say thank you. Uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I did take a lot of time making this and, and, and actually solving the questions one by one and then coming up with explanations for them. So subscribe to my channel for part two. I'm going to go, I'm going to uh, come up with part two using uh, trees. I'm going to do graphs. I'm going to do different types, greedy algorithms, uh, uh, dynamic programming. So, so please subscribe for more. Thank you.